What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield of VGC 2022 video where I'm going to be talking about my top 5 picks for the best restricted duos in the VGC 2022 format. But before we get into that, do me a favor, if you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content. And answer my comment question of the day, what are your top 5 restricted duos or what's just your top 1 restricted duo? Before we get into this video, we actually have a sponsor that has supported this video. All right, everybody, today's video is sponsored by Toner. Now, when Toner approached me with an offer to sponsor the video and show off their new product, the Toner TC30, I thought it was actually kind of an amazing collaboration idea considering that you guys always compliment me on my voice. And if you guys want your voice to sound as good, if not better than my voice, I would actually highly recommend this microphone. It's actually a pretty good budget microphone. It's on sale on Amazon for just over $40, which is an amazing price for a microphone of this quality. You can hear the quality of the microphone as I speak into it right now. And you can actually see right here, it actually comes with a shock mount, which is an amazing deal if you're at all familiar with microphones. Shock mounts are able to absorb a lot of like the annoying stuff that might happen while you're recording, like bumping your desk. You won't hear that at all in the recording. And it also comes with a little stand here, so it's great for on the go recording. I know this is actually gonna be coming with me anytime I attend a tournament in the future. I'll be able to bring my toner microphone with me and I won't have to lug around anything terribly heavy carried on the plane. It'll be great for travel and recording videos while I'm on the go at tournaments or any kind of event. So if you guys want to check out this item, it's gonna be linked in the description down below. Be sure to click through my specific link Thank you so much, Rotona, for sponsoring this video. If you guys are supporting them by buying this microphone, you're also supporting me by helping me get more sponsorships with them. So yeah. Let's go ahead and get into the video, which will be recorded entirely on this toner microphone. Okay, so beginning at number five, we have Zacian and Palkia. Now, Zacian and Palkia have a lot of pretty good results. Uh, in the VR tournament, the winner was actually a Zacian Palkia player, and in the latter tournament that I ran a few weeks ago, the second place team was a Zacian and... No, the first place team was a Zacian and Palkia team. So, the thing with Zacian and Palkia, the reason I don't rank it higher is because... Um, what I would value more out of a restricted duo would actually be just the ability to play it super straightforward. Even though like Zacian and Palkia is like a really, really powerful duo, I would consider it to be a high skill floor, high skill ceiling sort of composition. Basically, if you're just getting used to playing series 12, you're not going to get as much out of it out as like one of the, the best players in the format. Like if, if you're like a Wolf Glick, you'll be able to use like Zacian Palkia to much greater effect. However, it is up there with the top five. So clearly it has to be good. Why is Zacian crowned plus Palkia good? Well, for one, Zacian and Palkia actually cover each other defensively pretty well. Palkia doesn't like facing opposing fairy types. I guess Zacian would be its worst matchup technically because it doesn't like having to take a play rough. And while Zacian crown can switch in on a play rough, uh, you're gonna start dealing with some annoying things, whether it be speed ties with Behemoth Blade, or maybe just having to switch in on like Incineroar Flare Blitzes and stuff. So that's kind of rough. Um, besides that though, like defensively, they have a really good synergy going on. Palkia being able to be the prime Dynamax target for your team, Sensation can't Dynamax is really cool. Basically, Palkia is going to be able to set up a trick room if you have a slower mode on the team. We have seen some Zacian and Palkia combos run something like Incineroar on the squad plus uh, an Amoongus since Amoongus makes getting off trick room much easier. And just that combination of Pokemon is already super solid. However, uh, we have also seen like the VR Tour winner, uh, the 500 person tournament winner, had a Grim Snarl on their team. And while they are doubling up on fairy types, Zacian and Palkia are both so bulky that running the Grim Snarl with screen on it uh, and light clay also just made them nearly unkillable so yeah uh, beyond that I would say that the final Pokemon is usually gonna be something like a Zapdos since uh, the team technically doesn't have a ground resist yet uh, or even a thunderous would even be better because thunderous is able to not only switch in on ground moves from opposing Groudon uh, but also get intimidate uh, to raise its attack stat due to the fact that it has the ability to fight. So all of a sudden there, if you lead off with Zacian plus Thunderous and they end up intimidating your Zacian with an Incineroar in lead, now the Thunderous is powered up and it just makes everything so much more difficult to deal with. Not only that, but Zacian's worst matchup in this format is arguably against uh, Groudon since Groudon has a high physical defense stat and is able to one-shot Zacian with the Precipice Blades, uh, whether it have like a Life Orb or it just gets like a, a Swords Dance off. So that's really annoying for Zacian. 
Palkia is able to not only KO Groudon with a Max Geyser, uh, but it's also able to just lower the damage output of your opponent's Pokemon overall by going for Max uh, Worm Winds. But yeah, I would say Zacian and Palkia are a bit more difficult to use than the average restricted duo, and that's strictly because uh, you're going to have to deal with a lot of pivoting with Incineroar and Amoongus uh, and make sure that you actually like get your Intimidates where you need them most. Like You have to be careful not to uh, Intimidate Opposing Thunderous because that can run through your team, but beyond that, I think Zacian and Palkia is just such a solid duo that it's pretty hard to pass up if you're trying to build a team. Speaking of duos that are kind of high skill ceiling, high skill floor, we have Groudon and Eveltal. Now, why are Groudon and Eveltal so good? Well, they cover each other extremely well. Eveltal's worst matchup is versus opposing Zacian, and arguably Regieleki, obviously, an AV Eveltal can take a hit from Regieleki really, really easily. Uh, but Groudon is able to deal with both of those things. Groudon not only has the chance to scare out a Zacian if you manage to get a speed boost off, because your Eveltal went for a max... Um, for a max airstream, but also it's able to completely wall Regieleki since the best thing Regieleki could really hit you with is a max strike coming off a hyper beam, which let's be real 100 base attack. That's not going to be hitting too much on a Groudon. So uh, they just cover each other super, super well. And Eveltal isn't even usually the prime Dynamax target for Groudon teams, and neither is Groudon. Here's the kicker. Groudon and Eveltal are almost a means to an end for G-Max Venusaur. Now, G-Max Venusaur, we all know, is just a super, super powerful Pokemon. The fact that it's able to get Vines on the field that hit everything for one-sixth their health for four turns if it isn't a Grass-type is huge. There aren't very many good Grass-types in the format. You'll typically really only see, like, an Amoongus and a Ferrothorn, and even those aren't guaranteed on a lot of teams. Rillaboom is also a decent pick. However, G-Max Venusaur is going to be able to hit it with a Weather Ball, which turns into Max Flare, or even better, a Max Ooze, which will not only boost the special attack of your Venusaur, but also boost the special attack of the Eveltal that's likely next to it. As for other partners, I think that these two obviously want a Thunderous next to them. Because Groudon hates getting intimidated, because uh, Venusaur can get switched in on by a Incineroar, Thunderous is a very, very obvious pick here. It's going to be able to take hits uh, for the uh, it's going to be able to take the Intimidate and just run with it, uh, because obviously Groudon's just an Intimidate target. Obviously, because you have a Groudon on this team, you would actually appreciate Trick Room, and there are a few Trick Room setters that are really good in this format, but I would say Porygon 2 is probably your best bet, and beyond Porygon 2, it's mostly just like a filler Pokemon. I would say you can get away with quite a few Pokemon. Incineroar is likely going to be your best bet, though, because while you are doubling down on the Dark types, it doesn't really matter because Incineroar is just a, such a, it's just such a splashable Pokemon. The Fake Out, uh, the Intimidate, the Snarl. The utility you get out from this thing is just incredible. And just like that, you have one of the bulkier compositions that you can run in this format while also having one of the scariest offensive uh, combinations of Pokemon that you can like even dream to run. Max Airstream off Velta hits like a truck. The special defense drops off of Max Darkness are incredibly useful when you're running. Uh, you could even run like a special Thunderous on this team if you really wanted to, or the Porygon 2 at plus one does a lot of damage, and Venusaur obviously is going to be able to hit things with Sludge Bombs and Leaf Storms for quite a bit of damage. So yeah, I think Groudon Velto, much like Palkia and Zacian, is a very strong duo. It just really takes a lot of practice to get used to. Beyond that, uh, it hard loses to Kyurem. Nothing really beats Kyurem on most uh, Groudon Eveltal teams, so that's something that's kind of annoying. Uh, you can almost beat Kyurem with a Bronzong. However, Bronzong still gets hit by Max Quake off of Kyurem since Turbo Blaze ignores Levitate, so that's a little bit annoying. However, yeah, like you, you want to be able to beat Kyurem, and that's sort of just like the only seriously problematic matchup that this thing has. Okay, Zacian Eveltal is my number three pick. Now, as you can see, the higher we get up on this list, the more hyper offensive things get and the less thinking you kind of have to do. Why is Zacian Eveltal a good combination? Well, Eveltal, like I said before, is a pretty decent Dynamax target since you're able to go for max airstreams to speed boost your Zacian. Uh, since Zacian is able to deal with the fairy types that Eveltal gets walled by, whether it be a Tapu Fini, which you still, like, it, it only does, like, neutral damage to it, but Zacian's, like, such a strong breaker that it can actually just completely annihilate uh, Tapu Fini with one or two hits. So yeah, Eveltal is still going to be paired very, very well next to a uh, Venusaur. However, now that you don't have the 
uh, Groudon on your team, you actually have to probably run a Torkoal to make up for that. Torkoal isn't a bad Pokemon. Obviously, Torkoal is going to be able to set up the sun, go for yawns, go for eruptions, and be a good Trick Room Pokemon. So another Pokemon that you would typically run on this thing, once again, is going to be a Porygon too. Uh, however, something that you get from this team that you don't really get from the Groudon composition is an option in an Intimidator and in an extra flying type. So while Thunderous is really good on this team, since obviously Zacian's a prime Intimidate target, you could also get away with running a Landorus here. And that's because Landorus is not only an Intimidate Pokemon, but also it's able to switch in on ground moves for opposing or er, for your Zacian. Uh, it's able to wall out opposing ground on, and it's also just a decent Dynamax target overall. So once again, much like the Groudon team, you have a super bulky composition here that is able to go like hyper offensive mode if you really want it to, or you could even play the slow game with a Porygon 2 Torkoal Eveltalization game plan. So yeah, I think that this is one of the strongest compositions we've seen in a long time as far as Eveltal goes. I think this is probably the best Eveltal partner uh, since it has a slightly better matchup versus Kyurem White. Uh, Zacian obviously is going to be able to get one shot by a Max Quake from Kyurem White with a Life Orb, but that's only if the Kyurem White manages to outspeed you anyways. So you could use Porygon 2 to sort of work your way around that, uh, get under Trick Room when they want to go for a Tailwind and a Max Quake, and then one shot them with a Behemoth Blade. So yeah. I think that this is a very strong combination and probably as good as Eveltal gets in the format. Next up is a composition that I think a lot of people are sleeping on despite how obviously powerful it is, and that is Calyrex Ice plus Kyogre. Calyrex Ice is such a nuisance in this format because you can intimidate it, you can do whatever you want to it, you can switch in your Incineroar like five times, get it to minus five attack, but Dang it, nothing resists Glacial Lance. I know that Fire-type moves resist Glacial Lance. I know Steel-type Pokemon resist Glacial Lance. I know that there's a lot of Pokemon that resist Ice moves, but nothing specifically resists Glacial Lance. This thing is a monster. Usually, this team is pretty linear. In my opinion, Calyrex Ice plus Kyogre is one of the most linear teams you could be running right now. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that it is very obvious what you want to do. So wherever there's a Calyrex Ice, there's usually a Mimikyu, and that's because it's very easy, not Mr. Mime, not Choice Band Mr. Mime, a Mimikyu. And that's because Mimikyu is very easily able to get off a Trick Room. Uh, if you run a Mental Herb, Trick Room, not Trick, Trick Room, and Shadow Sneak. Uh, and what that's gonna let you do is just very easily go for Trick Room. If they have a Taunt user, your mental herb pops and they're not able to stop it. If they double on the Mimikyu, very easy solution, put an Incineroar on your team so you fake out one of the Pokemon, all of a sudden they can't break the disguise and KO you, they can't taunt you, the Trick Room always goes up. What happens next? Calyrex switches in and you go for the side Shadow Sneak and now you're at plus two and you can go ahead and click your Glacial Lance worry-free because everything's gonna take minimum like 40% from this thing. Some things that resist it like Kyogre are gonna start getting one shot. Like it's, it's an absurdly powerful move. A spread move that also is like a physical ice move with 100% accuracy is absurd. It's crazy that they let this thing into the game. Itself also gets uh, Trick Room. Uh, it's able to run protect uh to just be able to you know get trick rooms off with partner pokemon uh and defend itself while it's uh dynamax or versus opposing dynamax since it has really good bulk even if it's like a super effective hit uh, behind a protect it's going to be able to take max moves pretty well and of course the final move is typically high horsepower because it's pretty easy to call when the incineroar wants to come in many teams don't have an answer to calyrex ice beyond incineroar so what you do is literally say oh hey that thing doesn't want to take a glacial lance let's just high horsepower it and then all of a sudden the incineroar comes in and while they intimidated you and brought you down to to plus one instead of plus two now you ko them and your ability as one gives you a boost for KOing the Incineroar. So that is disgusting. As far as the last Pokemon goes, um, sometimes you see like a Tornadus, right? Sometimes you see a Tornadus to make Kyogre even better. Uh, but also, dual weather on this squad isn't bad. You can literally run like a Torkoal and still be fine. And then at that point, you just like switch out the Incineroar for some other Pokemon. You could literally put a Tornadus there still. But I think I think Incineroar is still really good. So yeah, I think Calyrex Ice Kyogre, whether it be pure rain or dual weather, is a disgusting combination. Obviously, Kyogre is one of the strongest restrictions we have in the format. Drizzle, Faux Shizzle is going to make Water Spout hit like a truck if you go first. Uh, it doesn't like facing off against things like... Uh, 
Assault Vest Veltal, which is, you know, it, it's it's obvious why, because Snarl comes out, because Sucker Punch comes out, because it just lowers the damage Kyogre is able to deal with, um, or to deal out. But Calyrex Ice just makes Eveltal want to stay home. It just doesn't want to come out to the game. Like, that's that's huge, especially under Trick Room. Eveltal has very little options versus Calyrex Ice. And if something has a Focus Sash, you can just double down on it with, like, Shadow Sneak plus uh, Glacial Lance. It's, it's so easy. But yeah. Trick Room Hyper Offense or Tailwind Hyper Offense, Kyogre, Calyrex just go insane. And Calyrex, the scary part about it is I have faced Tailwind Calyrex before. Because 50 is like a low speed stat, but it's not so low that you can discount the Trick Room. Turbo Calyrex is a real thing that I've had to deal with, and I don't like it. But yeah, scary combination, very, very easy to run, super linear, uh, and very powerful. That's why it's number two. But what's number one? I think you all can guess what number one is if you haven't guessed it yet. My number one pick is Zacian Crowned and Kyogre. So why is Zacian Crowned Kyogre so good? Zacian Crowned has very few answers in this metagame. Uh, Incineroar is one of its best, not counter, not even like a check. It's just able to annoy Zacian. It's able to lower the attack stat. It can threaten to KO if the sun's out and it goes for a Flare Blitz. Uh, it's able to fake out the Zacian since Zacian can't Dynamax. That's super reliable. And Parting Shot goes through sub, so you can still kind of cycle in on a substitute uh, Zacian. Kyogre annihilates that. Kyogre also annihilates Zacian's next best check, Groudon. Kyogre just fixes everything that Zacian can't deal with. And while there are a lot of options for Kyogre, uh, typically I would like to go with Mystic Water on this set or on this on this combination because the last few Pokemon are really easy to pick. You put a Tornadus on this team. You put uh, an Electric type. It can be a Zapdos. I've seen plenty of Zapdos on this team. I've also seen Thunderous. I think Dual Genies is perfectly fine on this. Uh, since once again, Zacian's an Intimidate target. Now you don't have to deal with that. Uh, but you know, typically we'll actually see Zapdos since Zapdos has more immediate potential, like a Life Orb Zapdos with, um, I've seen Rising Voltage quite a bit, but also Thunderbolt is just a little bit more common and Thunder is even better since Thunder combos well with the Kyogre. Uh, it also has access to Eerie Impulse, which is really annoying. It has Hurricane, which is 100% accurate in the rain. So yeah, like you basically have like two very prime Dynamax targets. As far as other Pokemon go, once again, where Kyogre goes, Venusaur is sure to follow with a dual weather combo, but that isn't even like necessary. Your last two Pokemon can be like an Incineroar, and it isn't even that bad to run a Ferrothorn on this team. Ferrothorn is able to do so much for Kyogre since uh, the rain is able to cut the damage that it takes from fire moves in half. Uh, but even then, leave the Ferrothorn at home. Amoongus does just as well. It's hard to find a Pokemon that doesn't do well on a combination like this. Zacian and Kyogre cover each other so well that they cover just the entire rest of the team. While other team comps require support for the two Restricteds to work, the two Restricteds are each other's support. So everything just works, and that's so good. Yes, it's not like overpowered, but I think it's the easiest team to run right now. I think it's the most reliable team to run right now, and I think it's like the easiest one to sort of tailor make to what you wanna run. You can fit so many different Pokemon in the last four slots on this team that it's just very, very malleable and just a great composition. I don't know what else to say about it. It's so good, but yeah. Uh, that's my thoughts. Those are my top five teams uh, or my top five restricted duos for this format. If you guys enjoy or if you guys have a different restricted duo that you think is better, leave it in the comment section down below. Uh, leave a like in the video if you enjoyed. Be sure to check out the sponsor link as well. Check out my Discord, check out my Twitter, my Patreon. Everything's linked down below. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.